All right, welcome to the Pixelgate Maker tutorial. This is Baz, and today we are going to be going over the lighting system in Pixel Game Maker. We will add a light to this player, and then we will darken this scene so that the light is contrasting what is lit up and what is not. And so yeah, I'm just I have a simple scene right here with a player, and that's all you need. So we'll go into objects, and we I'm just going to use my player to set this light up. We'll click on this right up at the top here, this cogwheel. We will select that we want to set a uh, field of vision or lighting, and we'll click OK. The tab pops up here at the top. You can move the tab around as you please. I'm just going to leave it where it starts. And you can click the plus, and you will have a field of vision or lighting, 1001. You can name this to whatever you want. We can name this player light, because that's where it's going to be lighting. And you'll want to select the lighting option. The field of vision and lighting, they share the same uh, settings, so we want to specify that it's a light. If we preview, you will see that this is what we get out of the box with the basic option. Now there's some stuff that we can do to really make this light look a lot better. Right now it looks a little rough, so let's dive into those. First thing we can do is we can set an enable or a disable switch. Now you can do this with the object self switch, which you will find in switch management can right click and add or you can do it with a common switch which you find in your resources switches tab if you wanted to make one but you didn't already make one you can click this new right here and it'll create you just a default one that you can go into switch management and change the name from there so if you have this switch as what is enabling and disabling your light and you click preview, you'll notice that the light's gone now. That default light is gone. And that is because the light starts out disabled and we have no runtime in the in this object or any object that sets this switch on. So just note that the light will always start out disabled if you attach a switch to it. We'll click none for this purpose of this tutorial. Now we'll go over the the central angle this is basically, this whole section right here is the size and the shaping of your light. So a 360 degrees is going to be a full circle. That's why we have the full circle uh, showing. If we were to have it 180 degrees, we would get what we would think half a circle, which it did. It gave us half of a circle. It gave us it particularly on the left half of the circle. So why was that the case? That is because this rotate option right here, this black line, you can move around, and that is going to be the center of your 180 degree angle. So if you click preview on, say, this angle, this 22.3, it's going to give you a half circle based off the center of that angle that you sent. So an easy way to think about this is, is I'll just put this back here to 270, is you can take this angle and you can have it, which would be 90. And then you can come down here to this black line and you can say, okay, this 180 degrees is going to go 90 this way and 90 this way. And that's how we got that left half circle. That's one way that you can think about it. So, and that's exactly what it gives us actually. Okay. So let's go, we got the dot count and this is the radius. So the radius is from the center of the circle to the outer edge. So it's basically half of the circles, uh, length in this case dot count we saw what it looked like with 64 if we just change it to 32 real quick you'll see that it's smaller but it's also the half circle because i forgot to change the the uh, central angle here so yeah we get the full circle 32 uh, radius now we can scale the x say we scale it 200 percent then we would get more of an oval and then we can do the same with the Y. We can scale that 200%. And then we get the normal dot radius that we started out with, 64. So I'm going to change these back to 100 and 100. And so that's the basics of this shape and sizing. So now let's go on to applying a color or a hue. And this is where you would ch change the opacity, basically the transparency of the light. You change the red, the green, and the blue combinations to get the colors that you want. 
So first off, if you don't have this selected and you were to preview it, the light would also be gone. And that's because it's you selected not to have it viewed. So we, we always want this on if you want to view your light. Now let's go to opacity. If you have an opacity of zero, your light is going to also not appear. That's because it's fully transparent at that point. Now if you have your light at uh, 255, then it would be a full solid color. In this case, white, the combination that we have with our hues. If we were to bring our green down to zero and our blue down to zero and leave our opacity in red, then it would be a red circle, uh, or a, sorry, a red solid color. So you always generally want some kind of uh, a little opacity. You don't want too much opacity with your light. That way you can see through, see your object, etc. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to use a red of 100, a green of 50, and a blue of 0. And that will get me a color that is somewhat orangish. And I think that looks good for like a torch or something. And so yeah, that's the colors. So now let's come over to this option that we have, a circumference blur. Right now it's at 0%. Let's go 100% and see what happens. You'll notice that it starts getting, it starts uh, fading out some of those hard pixels going in the circle. And it looks more like a light source that we've seen in other games. It's starting to look like that. And so this is what you're going to want to do for your light sources is add a circumference blur. Now what if we only added a 50% circumference blur and we preview that. You would notice that it waited till 50% of the radius to start and then it blurred it out. So you can add some uh, interesting effects for specific lights that you might need this for. And so that is a circumference. We're going to leave that at 100%. So you can set this at the center of the, the object, which we have been. You can set it at the floor. If you do it at the floor, it, it should go based off of where you had the, uh, the object in your animations. So for instance, in this particular animation, I have it floored. So it went down to right here. And that's why it was at the feet. So you can also set this up to a connection point. If you were to go to animations on the idle down, I'll just do this one real quick. And if I was to add a keyframe and I wanted the connection point to be up here, then I could go to objects, set this at the connection point and click preview. And you would see that the object got offset to that connection point. And it didn't follow because I didn't set the connection point with any of the other ones. Only when I'm down and idle does it go to that connection point. So you can make some, some interesting moving systems using the connection point. I'm just going to leave it on center of this object. You can also adjust the, the light just by pixels. And so if you, say, set it 50 to the right and, and 50, which will go down, the light should now appear on the down right of the player and it maintains on the, on the, uh, on the screen as you're walking around, but we don't want to adjust that. Okay. So now we've, we've set up a light, but it's not really dark yet. And there's no, the light's not really doing much. It's just kind of there. It actually looks, you know, a little blurry even. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to action programs and just on the object that you set this light up on, we're just going to create another action and we're going to call this one the setup and just link it to whatever other object or whatever action you had. And then just make sure that it's the default um, action. And so what we need to do now is we need to darken the screen so that the light actually looks like it's lighting up. So we're going to go to our runtime action and we're going to apply a screen effect to the scene. And in this one, we're going to do the darken and we don't want it to be a hundred percent dark. We want it to be, we'll just say 60% dark and time until completion. Let's just, let's give it three seconds. We'll watch it slowly get dark when we start the scene and we'll hit okay. So as soon as that runtime action happens, 
it's then going to change unconditionally into your normal object. And so if we hit play, you can see that the screen is darkening and the light is slowly lighting the scene. So if we had more tiles here, you could see that it would be lighting up those tiles. And one thing to note is that this treetop is on a different layer. It's on the layer above and this the tree base is on the player layer. That way the collision won't let the player walk through. So you can see that the light will not show on the above layer. So just keep that in mind as you're setting up your light sources. But this has been the basics of setting up the light source. And the next video, I'll start off with some examples and it will be of a campfire. And we will go from there.